It's time for Dirt Daily, and today I am back in the shop with my dirty 80 Series Land Cruiser. And because the 80 Series Land Cruiser is in the shop, that means this episode is presented by Onyx Off-Road. Onyx Off-Road is a mapping app you get for your phone, and you download different maps. So when you're going four-wheeling, you can find trails, and you can lay waypoints, and basically find your way around and find your way home if you need to. Uh, I was recently down in Johnson Valley for the big King of the Hammers race, which is this awesome event. There's tons and tons of people out there. Onyx is there. They have like lots of the trails mapped out. They actually have the whole race course mapped out. But because there's all these people there and it's just kind of mayhem, we decided to go the opposite direction and leave the lake bed and go find a trail that led us down to a little cool town called Pioneer Town, which is south of Johnson Valley, kind of down near Yucca Valley. I'd never been on this trail before, which was great because I was looking for a trail that I could take my Jeep on. I actually drove Noob Sock, my JL, down there, and I wanted to wheel it, but I didn't want to destroy it. I wasn't looking for the normal Johnson Valley trails, which can be total can openers to your 4x4. So we went down there, we ran this trail, and because I had my Onyx app, I was able to save the trail, lay out some waypoints, find my way back to that trail if I ever want to go back down there. Because we drove down there, we went out this trail, um, we did some rock crawling, we had a great day, and we ended up at this really cool bar restaurant down in Pioneer Town and had lunch. Um, and it was so much fun that I definitely want to do it again. So I saved that trip on my Onyx, uh, which is one of the benefits of having this Onyx app. But we're not here to talk about the Onyx app. We're here to talk about the Land Cruiser, which we're trying to get together so that someday we can actually take it on some adventures. The last time it was in the shop, I put this ARB bumper on. I put this worn 8,000 pound winch on. And today I'm going to put a winch line on it. Uh, it's a pretty simple install, but there's a few little tidbits about this that make it a little different than normal. This winch line is from Bubba Rope. Uh, Bubble Rope is one of my favorite recovery companies. Uh, we've used them over the years. They make a really great kinetic rope that's great for snatching people out of mud. Basically, you drive away and the rope stretches, and then as it contracts, it pulls the vehicle out of the mud or sand or whatever. Uh, winch rope is different though. Winch rope is not designed to stretch. It's designed to work as uh, a lightweight alternative to steel cable. So today we're gonna install this on the winch. Um, I'm gonna show you a few little pointers when you're doing that. Uh, it's not really that hard, but it's stuff that you gotta think about when you're putting a new synthetic rope on your winch. This is the bubble rope winch line. And you'll notice that the first section of it is bright red. Uh, this is the section that you want to be closest to the drum because, well, this is the part that goes on the drum. But the reason it's red is because if you are pulling the winch line out and you see that you're getting to the red section, uh, you know that you need to stop because you never want to have less than 10 wraps of your synthetic winch rope on your winch. So the first 10 wraps that go around the drum, you need to keep those on there because that keeps the rope attached to the drum. Now, if this was steel, I believe you can get down to five wraps uh, as per Warren's instructions. But for synthetic, you wanna keep it at 10. Plus, the bubble rope also has this material that goes around those first that first red section, and this is to dissipate heat, protect the winch line from heat. Um, a lot of these winch drums act as sort of a brake, and they can transfer heat from the motor and the braking system into that drum, and to protect the synthetic line from that heat, Bubba Rope has installed this heat shield. They have a special name for it. What's it called? Uh, heat eater, the heat eater guard. Bubba Rope, if there's one thing about Bubba Rope, they have like some really fun names for their different uh, products. I think they have one that's called the Tree Hugger, which is like the uh, winch uh, tree saver type strap. Um, this little piece right here, which we're gonna show you in a second, is the Grabber, which is used to mount that first section of winch line onto the drum. Um, and then of course the name itself, Bubba Rope. Most people would have think, why in the world would you name your company Bubba Rope? But uh, it's a name that people remember, so it's a good name. Let's put this on the drum and get this all mounted up. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is clean the drum of the winch. Uh, this 
winch has been out in the rain a little bit and there's some old kind of scuff marks on it. So I'm gonna wipe all that down, make sure that it's clean and dry because when we install the winch rope, we're gonna use this grabber piece and this actually sticks on with some 3M tape on the back there. Unlike some of Warren's winches, this one doesn't have like a notch and thimble set up to hold a synthetic rope, but that's okay because we have this and we have the bubble rope winch line. So the way it'll work is this little piece of webbing will basically stick to the drum of your winch with the, the winch line running in one side, wrapping up to five times with the last wrap going through the other loop of the webbing. So when you look inside here, you can see the grabber is stuck to the winch drum. Right there is a little Allen bolt. Now, if you were using steel cable, uh, steel cable usually has like an eyelet on the end and that's where you would attach it to the side of the drum. Because we're using winch rope, we don't need to use that. Uh, but I'm gonna just leave it there. You never know down the road if you decide to change back to uh, steel cable, uh, it's good to have it. So, and it's not really gonna hurt anything. It's nice and rounded so it won't affect the rope. So now we're going to bring the winch line here over the drum and into this side of the webbing and then wrap it around. Because I like overkill, I'm gonna grab a piece of this black duct tape, gaffer's tape and wrap it around the grabber just to give it a little bit more bite. Um, currently there's just that piece of adhesive, 3M adhesive on the back side of this. Now it has this piece of tape that runs all the way around the drum. So now we bring this line and we feed it right in here. I also put a little bit of that tape on the end to help it feed through this webbing. The whole idea of this webbing is that it grabs onto the rope really well, and which also makes it a little bit difficult to just to get it started. And then we'll feed this around the drum like I said, you want to do this five times just on the grabber itself. So here's one wrap. There you can see the winch line goes around and into the webbing, goes around five complete times and then sticks out the farther end. Uh, having that little tail on the end is not really a problem. It's all gonna be buried underneath the winch line. So now what we do is we will engage the winch and fill up the whole drum with the winch line that has that heat shield on it. Whenever I'm winching, I try to wear gloves. Um, even though it's synthetic line and it's a lot easier on your hands than steel cable, it's always a good idea to wear gloves. Uh, you never know if you're out. Let's say you're out rock crawling in the desert and you're winching and then you get some cactus or something like that in the winch rope uh, as it's winching in. If you're holding it by your hand and you're kind of feeding it in and not paying attention, you can get that stuff cut right into your hand. It's even worse with steel cable. You could actually get like a burr from the steel cable. Um, but always, always try to use your gloves when you're winching. Now, the first wrap of the winch, you want this to be pretty tight. And eventually what we'll do, maybe not on this episode, but in the future, I'll show you how to stretch the winch line. But for now, we just wanna get this seated on there as best we can. It's a little tricky uh, doing it by yourself.
because you want to have it under load as you're winching in. There you can see that first uh, wrap on the drum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I really don't want to have any less than thirteen wraps on that drum. Uh, you really want to have a good bite for that base layer, and that is actually the strongest, like at this point is the strongest pull that the winch will give you. Um, with each consecutive layer of line, it actually reduces the pulling strength of the winch. But that doesn't mean that you should pull all of your winch line out if you're stuck. Uh, really, you only ever need to use the, the minimum amount. If it's not gonna pull your vehicle out, it's probably better to use a snatch block where you go out and through a pulley and back to your vehicle than it is to try and use like all 80 feet so that you can get to that bottom level. So now we're gonna just slowly uh, winch, uh, winch in and spool in the line. Try to keep it as clean as possible. And there's that point that I was telling you about where the line changes from red to this bright green. That is when you know that you're getting down to those bottom layers on your winch drum. Uh, this one actually seems to have almost two full wraps before it runs out, but that doesn't mean that you should be using any of this red line. If possible, try to keep all of that red line on the drum and just use the green stuff. Oh, here's another cool feature of the bubble rope winch line is every 10 feet, there is a red marker onto the green line so that you have some idea of how much line you have pulled out. Now, even though I'm trying to get this on here as tight as I can and as clean as I can, you still have to, you're still gonna come back eventually and tighten or uh, pre-tension your line. So we're gonna get this line on here. Another 10 foot marker right there. Then we get to the top level, which is, or the end level, which is this black section. And this brings me to the thimble. Uh, the bubble rope is pretty cool because it has this integrated thimble that's built into it. Um, it's covered in this heavy duty sheath. Uh, it has a big rubber kind of grommet thing on it. And this can pull right up into the fair lead. Now, thimbles. <sighs> Some people love thimbles. Uh, the whole idea of the thimble is that uh, it's a closed system. So if you want to hook this winch to a tree saver or what another vehicle, um, it's a closed system so you don't have a hook. And the idea behind that is a good idea because when you have everything hooked up, it's not, there's no likelihood that it's going to unhook as you're winching or it's going to fall apart. However, using a thimble requires another piece of equipment. It either requires a soft shackle. This is the gator jaw soft shackle from Bubba Rope, um, which you slide open you put through the thimble and then you tighten it up and that is what you use to attach to the strap. Or, uh, let's see if we can find one over here. Use a steel shackle, which you say you loop this through the other vehicles, tow point, or through two ends of a tree saver, and then you put that into the thimble at the end of your winch line. 
Everybody loves the soft shackle because it's less metal, which I agree with. Having less metal is a good idea. Um, the steel shackles, they're stupid, tough, and reliable, but um, some people don't like it because it's a metal component within your winching, which, yes, if the winch line breaks or the tree saver breaks, this can become a projectile. But I've seen a lot of times where that is not the case. Like these things are all pretty reliable. What is nice about the shackle is that um, a lot of vehicles no longer have a tow hook. They have uh, some sort of loop that the shackle attaches to. Now, I, on the other hand, am a big fan of a hook, especially if you can find a hook that has a good closure like this. Uh, I don't even know what this hook is off of, uh, but it says, Forged in the USA, which I like, and um, it has like a little snap ring, a little cotter pin there, and a big pin. And the reason I like a hook instead of a thimble is because of the worst case scenario. I know that I will get chastised for not saying that the thimble is the best thing since sliced bread, but hear me out. You are snow wheeling and you're out with your buddies snow wheeling and you get stuck. And you're like, well, no problem. I have a thimble on my winch line. I'm just going to, uh, I'll just pull my winch line out and I'll hook it to my tree saver. But here's the problem. You put your shackle down here on your bumper. And while you were four wheeling, it rattled loose. And the pin, that fell off in the snow and the shackle, that fell off in a mud puddle and you didn't even notice it because you were just four wheeling and having a good time. And now you're stuck in the snow and you go to hook up and you're like, where's my shackle? I don't have my shackle. Or you have your um, soft shackle and you're like, nah, it's cool, I got a soft shackle. But earlier in the day, your buddy Dave, he got stuck in the snow and he was like, hey, I didn't bring any shackles. Anybody got a shackle? And you're like, yeah, sure, here you go, Dave. You threw him your soft shackle. Dave got out. Um, Dave's wife was making chili and he was like, I got to get home. I'm having chili. And I'm like, well, I'm going to keep snow wheeling. I keep snow wheeling. And then all of a sudden I'm stuck in the snow. Dave's not here. Uh, my shackles lost and I have a thimble on the end of my winch line. What am I going to do? Now, if I have a hook and it's a good size hook, I can run a tree saver around the tree and hook both ends of it into this and recover myself. If I have a thimble, there's no, there's no way to attach it to the tree saver unless I have a shackle, which I don't because I lost these shackles. I gave the soft shackle away. Um, yeah, it'd be great if I had spares, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes you lose stuff. And sometimes it's an emergency like, like the vehicle rolled over and you're like, I got to get this winch line onto that roll cage and get it back on to its wheels as fast as possible because somebody's stuck under the roll bar or somebody's got their arm pinched or whatever. In a worst case scenario, you can take this winch line, wrap it around the tree, the roll bar, the whatever, hook it back on itself and use that as a recovery. You don't wanna do this, but sometimes you have to do this. Sometimes this is life or death. This is getting out of the snow and getting back to civilization versus being stuck out on a mountainside overnight, suffering from hypothermia and not getting back. So, as much as I love the theory of the thimble, that's kind of like a perfect scenario situation. The hook is the worst case scenario situation. Um, 
This thing, you can hook it onto stuff, you can hook it around stuff, and at the end of the day, you're gonna get home with this. Even if it's like, oh, I hooked it and then it came loose and it fell off because you, you broke this little dingus. I get it, that's not ideal, but I would rather have a hook than just a thimble. Um, so even though there are companies out there that have made their name by selling thimbles, I am a big hook fan. Um, so if it was up to me, winches would have hooks on them. I'm gonna get off my soapbox now because nobody really wants to hear me talk about how much I love hooks instead of thimbles. Oh, but I have one more thing I need to show you. All right, welcome to the whiteboard. This is the final step of the winch line install. What we're gonna do, we're not gonna do it today because it's dark out and I can't film it, but I wanna do it eventually. But I'm gonna show it to you as a diagram version. Um, you're gonna find a hill. Not a big hill, just a kind of average hill. First, you're gonna find a marker that actually writes. First, you're gonna get rid of both of those markers because neither of them write. What marker do we have? How about a blue one? Oh yeah, here we go. First, you're gonna get a hill. And then up at the top of that hill, you're gonna find yourself a nice big tree. And then down here, Let's say you have 80 feet of winch line. Let's say about 70 feet away is your blue Land Cruiser. Man, that thing's ugly. There. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you are gonna put a tree saver around this and you're gonna freeze, you're gonna set this parking brake and you're gonna free spool the winch line out to that tree saver. Then, you are going to engage the winch and tighten up the winch onto that. Hop in the Land Cruiser and release the parking brake, put it in neutral and winch in your vehicle up this hill. It doesn't need to be a steep hill. It just needs to be enough of a hill that you're pulling the weight of that vehicle. And what you're doing is you're pre-tensioning all of that winch rope onto your winch. Um, it's usually best to do this with two people. One person that's kind of walking along, watching the winch line, making sure it's wrapping, spooling up really nice. Another person sitting in the vehicle, just in case something goes wrong, they can punch the brakes and keep it from rolling down the hill and into the river or the pond that's down there at the bottom of the hill. So you're gonna winch this in just nice and slowly, um, spooling it up nice and clean and just the weight of the vehicle. This can be in neutral, it just needs enough tension on there that it's preloading that winch line and sucking all of those, those layers of winch rope down on top of each other, nice and tight. And then when you go four-wheeling and you're actually gonna recover somebody or something, uh, all of that winch line is tight on there. It's not gonna push down onto a bottom layer and like bind up and like make a big mess of your winch line. So. This is called pre-tensioning your winch line. Um, people do it different ways. Some people put like a couple clicks on the parking brake so it has more uh, resistance. I just like it to put it in neutral. I mean, this vehicle's pretty heavy. It's gonna probably do the job. And it also depends on how steep of a hill you are. You don't want this thing super steep, um, just kind of nice and average. And that will pre-tension your winch line and get it all ready and tight so that when you are four wheeling and you have to use your winch, it's ready to go. Speaking of ready to go, I think that's it for this Dirt Daily. I hope you guys learned a little bit of something or other about winches and winch line. Um, we're that much closer to getting the Land Cruiser out of the shop and going four wheeling. We'll see you guys next time. By the way, thanks Onyx Off-Road for sponsoring this episode.